them and I'm happy to try and help. So let's take for a minute, we'll take another example. It was like I just felt because I came back from work, I didn't know how tired or not I would be, so I went and had a nap after work. And yeah. after the nap I felt like I have some energy, so I can just spend a nice quiet evening with my kids. So then I posted over there. And then uh, I saw so sweetly that most of you at such short notice just came. Is it? Now, if you can do this for this foolish one, we should do a gazillion times more for the one who lives in your heart. Because this one is just a mere instrument of the one who lives in your heart. So, if that kind of urgency, if that kind of commitment we can show towards him also, then your life is all different. There's nothing really left to be done. And I do realize that you come here because you feel like you will be deepen in God's love because you come. But uh, What time did you say? Five, six, three, five, 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 five. So, every moment is that potential with God. He's waiting in your heart temple. That is also such a privilege that He's there. And if we just allow Maya to have her, her way with us and even our spirituality becomes so that I progress, I do Suppose that I came to Satsang Hall 6.30 and everybody was too busy, didn't want to come so I wait for half an hour. Okay, kids are busy. Go away. No. Would you do that to God? But aren't we doing it too? So it's not a great trip, I'm just getting us to examine our life and what is really useful. Because this is the only meaning I found of my life. I looked for meaning for a long, long time. I read many, many books. And I almost became nihilistic in the sense of there is no meaning, but we can try and invent uh, meaning for ourselves, all those kind of philosophies. Nothing really satisfied my heart. I realized that the meaning of my life is to love God and to be with Him. In a way, I suppose all of you are to do that exploration for yourself and determine for yourself what you feel is the most meaningful way to spend spend your life. And that's a beautiful contemplation. But if you want to learn from the experience of those who are meeting coming across, then at least I can tell you that examining so many sources of meaning and how meaning is to be found. So whether you look at existentialism, absurdism, nihilism, positivism, all of these things. I just felt like uh, they appeal to me, but uh, it doesn't settle in my heart. I don't feel like I'm at home unless I'm with God or knowing that He's there with me. And the 
why not spend time with my like all of us that a bit we had some silly situation in the office today where for quite some time I forgot about God maybe 45 minutes I didn't think of him at all so 45 minutes wasted in this life but what can we do when we remember we just come back there's no point becoming guilty and saying oh because that is more than time I did Pull this, it pulls all of us. We just have to learn to settle in his presence. Mm-hmm. Your prayer is a very simple tool, our inquiry is a very simple tool. Mm-hmm. And the quiet prayer is a very simple tool. Then just to love and actively can seem a bit difficult, like we don't know how to do it initially, but uh, it becomes more and more natural. So we can just learn in that love. And it's a very beautiful sadhana. You just love God actively, either with the support of words or without them. Take away this one, you waste the pathways to God. The methods are not a problem, they are available. The truth of it, whether it is a fact that he does live in your heart, that is for you to examine because I can only say, I can only guide, I can only share my experience. And if you feel that it is true that he is there, then it is for you to examine whether a life spent without his presence in spite of him being there is worth it for you or not, that again is something that you have to examine. But if you say that he is there and I want to spend my life living in his love and light and in service to him, then the tools are available. I think we are very lucky that we live in an age where we have access to so many pathways to God. Then it's just a matter not merely intending but following through on our intention. And when we forget, we just remember that's right. So, what Like much of it, um, I can pray, I can bless you, I can do, I can speak the words, but the day to day, daily Mahabharat with Maya, that you have to do. And uh, I don't know what uh, value the teacher's blessing has and all those things, but all those are very due. You have to, but the, you have to go to war with my If you keep falling for it, mm-hmm. then it won't be that. Easy. Can you just remind us again? Like you said, another one you told us, I do that focused prayer. Like the old that one statement, which you haven't understood. I contemplated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, long term. So like, this one, like there's That's only one day. Yeah. I, 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 I contemplate. Also, I will be so full of So. Take any book which is written, preferably written by a sage. So you can take any of the Indian sages, any of the Western sages, any religion, any tradition, does not. But it must strike you as having the hand of God. Then it's really helpful. So if you feel like the perfume of God is there when you read something in God, then those books are really helpful for contemplative prayer, contemplative meditation. So then what you do is, uh, like if you're reading the interior castle, for example, or you're reading the Bhakti Sutras, for example, or if you're reading the Bhagavad Gita, for example, any of them. So you're reading it and you come across a line which really appeals to you somewhere. Like I've been taking the example of this line uh, from St. Teresa of Abhila. She said, 
how beautiful must that place be in my heart where His Majesty Himself comes, takes delight in resting. So she said, how beautiful must that place be in my heart where His Majesty takes delight in resting, where God takes delight in resting. So you can take that line, so the point is not to rush through any of that. So this line is there. I mean, when you read it, what happens? It leaves a certain fragrance with you. It leaves like, it's like you're not done with it. So you stay with that line. And don't move forward till you, from your heart, you feel like um, you're done with it. In the sense that, uh, I remember earlier, uh, when Radha used to sing Bhajan, she would start the version and finish it in one minute. So I was like, we're just getting started. She said, no, no, but I didn't want to take too much time or I was feeling conscious. So I said, no, keep singing it till you feel like in your heart you're done with the bhajan. So in the same way with this line, you can take it on and just stay with it. We'll take you to a quiet place. And then when you find yourself getting distracted by the mind again, then remember the line again. Say, how beautiful must that place be where His Majesty loves to, delights to rest. So return to that. Is it? And then what will happen is after maybe, that depends, some lines five minutes, some lines one hour, some lines thirty minutes. So when you feel like when you remember that line, it no longer has the potential to bring you to the bad place. Then you move to the next paragraph, next sentence. You see? So you may spend like the entire day reading only half a page or one page. Or you may, may start off by skimming a lot. Because if your mind is distracted, if you've been at work all day or something, then you may not immediately get into that mode. So you may read two pages. The good thing is we have thousands of books and scriptures which we can do basics, which can have that effect on us. So read, read, read till you come to a line which really works both. Then over there, don't then don't rush. Then stay with that. That's like Saint Therese said. In the world where there are such great sages and in in my father's garden there are these big flowers like roses and daisies and all those flowers. But uh, I don't feel like I'll ever be able to be one of those big flowers. But I'm happy to be a little flower. So that one day if he looks down at his feet and he sees this little flower, I hope I bring a smile to his face. So just reading that two, three lines brings you to that bhav, that uh, love, that devotion. And then you can just allow yourself to be the calm. So I love this. I mean, I can spend uh, days just doing this, just contemplating, reading, staying in the prayer of fire. Right. So the part. So I don't feel like there's anything else that is needed. Well, actually, just with the name of God, there's nothing else that is really needed. But sometimes Maya is so strong that we need to be inspired by a sage in some way, read these inspirational lives of the sages or uh, the old laws of God, then you get inspired to stay with him more. It can be anything, it can be a modern book, it doesn't have to be an ancient scripture. For you, gives you the fragrance of God's love. 
So the love itself then? Huh? Like that love for you, so yeah. not for something, so yeah. just that is enough. Yes. That love itself is enough because if you stay with that love, all love comes from one source. Yeah. So that is bound to, that perfume of that love is bound to pull you into mm -hmm. the, the who is not separated from his love. So we may not, our intention may just be to stay with the love. Maybe because of some, uh, maybe some bad experience we had, or we were forced to go to church or something like that. We don't know what looks we want. So we say, well, I'm not in this for God. I just want to be in this for love. But that love, which is unconditional, which is beautiful in that way, will automatically lead you to uh, the one. So, what how to do? Contemplate it. They said, come, you can also write down. And, um, but remember that 99% of the insight is wordless. Yeah. So, only 1% of the insight. We, and they're beautiful insights that come. And maybe one day you can publish your own diary of it. Or, okay. but, uh, but really, the wordless, ineffable insight is what is truly even more valuable than the beautiful words that you may take home. And many times you'll find that that contemplation leads you to another contemplation itself. So if you do... Uh, Yes, somebody put a search and I said, forget the world, only remember God. One point. Um, so the first response that came to that. The one thing needful is to know how to cross the river of the world. God alone is real. This is from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. God alone is real, where all else is illusory. While Arjuna was aiming his arrow at the eye of the bird, Dhruma asked him, What do you see? Do you see these kings? No, sir, replied Arjuna. Do you see me? No. The tree? No. The bird on the tree? No. What do you see then? Only the eye of the bird. He who sees only the eye of the bird can hit the mark. He alone is clever who sees that God is real and all else is illusory. Then, then Hanumanji. So, what need have I of other information? Hanuman once remarked, I don't know anything about the phase of the moon or the position of the stars. I only contemplate Rama. Hanumanji said like that. Then, somebody in the audience told uh, uh, Sri Ramakrishna, please buy a few fans for our use here. That is part of the text. 
Imagine you're sitting with uh, Sri Ramakrishna and the mind has a way of normalizing everything. So he's sharing all this about Hanuman, Jivyam, Arjuna, and all of that. And uh, somebody is just feeling too much heat. He's <laughs> just telling Sri Ramakrishna, please organize some fans for us to use. <laughs> So, like a, like a statement like that, where, and you can use the last one for contemplation also, like a Zen contemplation, but uh, but Hanumanji is saying that, I don't know anything about, maybe in the Ramcharitmanas they must have met some astrologer or something like that, then I don't know anything about the position of the moon and these stars, I just contemplate my Lord's name, blah, blah. So with that, we can just stay for a few moments, if it appeals to us. So we just keep reading till we find something that appeals to them. <laughs> this is very good about the one-pointed focus toward the path. Then from the Guru then Sahib, the next... Uh, they alone hold to the remembrance of Him, unto whom He Himself shows His mercy. We'll talk about that. Nanak beg, begs for the dust of their feet. Those who remember God generally, generously help others. Those who remember God, to them I am forever a sacrifice. Those who remember God, their faces are beautiful. Those who remember God abide in peace. Those who remember God conquer their souls. Those who remember God have a pure and spotless lifestyle. Those who remember God experience all sorts of joys. Those who remember God abide near the Lord. So a line like this, those who remember God abide near the Lord. We really hear it. So all it takes is for us to remember Him. To say Ram, Ram, Ram. And we can actually live near Him. Those who remember God abide near the law. We can spend many minutes just with one line like that. The more you deepen in His love and your intention to be with Him, the more your patience will grow with this, because initially it may seem like I can't spend so much time just with this one line, what's there in this line, you know, it may seem like that, but uh, as you try, as you stay with it, the more beautiful the, the fragrance of every word and remembrance to God will seem more and more as you do it. So you see, when we see our world, when we see ourselves, there is no world. And when we lose sight of the self, we get ourselves bound in the world. So the visitor asked, we are advised to concentrate on the spot in the forehead between our eyebrows. Is it right, Maharaj? Uh, Bhagavan said. Everyone is aware I am. Leaving aside that awareness, one goes about in search of God. What is the use of fixing one's eyes, attention between the eyes? Both? It is mere folly to say that God is between the eyes. The aim of such advice is to help to concentrate the mind. It is one of the forcible methods to prevent the mind, to check the mind and prevent its dissipation. Remember that. Uh, the sage's advice depends on the questioner also on what they need to get at that point. So, uh, for some it may be perfectly acceptable to do that sadhana, but for that one, obviously it wasn't. 
So from this book I found on the internet uh, called Lord Shiva Mahadeva. It was not a famous book, I just liked uh, the sound of it. It says, they keep the sight of Lord Vishnu's divine abode. Lays it as an offering at the lotus feet of the Lord. So just one line like that. If you are troubled with something, place it as an offering at the lotus feet of the Lord. So whatever is troubling you. Or whatever you are happy about, or whatever you are feeling proud about, or anything, just offer it. <laughs>